Hey, Alex. Hey, Ross. So you guys are working on 3D scanning and modeling and bringing that to the average house, is that right? Exactly. So the phones and tablets that we're all carrying around with us every day now, they have all these new sensors and the cameras are getting better. By harnessing all that and adding a new sensor of our own, we're able to allow people to capture a 3D model of their home in minutes. Very cool, very cool. So you guys are working on a project here? Yeah, you want to go check it out? Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. So this is the master bedroom, and the homeowners are looking to redesign it. They've been in this home for a while. They still have all the same furnishing that they brought with the home. Got it. Uh, they're looking to upgrade, and it's a pretty interesting space that they have to work with. I mean, yeah. you've got these dormers here. You've got uh, different ceiling heights right here. Challenging geometry. They've got the baseboards that they've got to work with. Um, they've got these big windows that they mm -hmm. have to deal with. Um, that's a lot of stuff that if you were measuring this room by hand to yeah. create a 3D model from scratch. I mean, the old-fashioned way is you take your measuring tape out, you measure it, you write it down a piece of graph paper, measure it again, go back to the graph paper, exactly. and you hope that you get every single measurement. Yeah, and that's only the ones that you remember that you need, not the ones that you only realize, oh, I want to put something here, so I need to know the distance of that. That's right, got it. Um, and there's been ways of doing 3D scanning before, but they've been tens of thousands of dollars, really high-end commercial stuff. Right, it's well, we, yep. Yeah, what we've done is we've crashed that down to be able to work on a regular mobile device. So a regular tablet, and this is your device right here? Exactly, and so it plugs right into the tablet itself. We make a different bracket for the different kinds of uh, sizes of tablets, and you slip it right on, a couple hundred dollars. Very cool. Uh, so compared to spending thousands of dollars uh, and hours of training and time to learn how to use these, right. this works on a device that people are already carrying around with them. Can I see you scan the room? Let's do it. All right. Start right here. So I'm just gonna hit the scan button right here, and you can see this white overlay over what the camera sees is showing what I've captured in real time. So you're just painting the wall. Basically, and it's measuring what it sees. And so I'm moving around the scene and it's capturing thousands of measurements per second just by me moving around the room, including these hard to uh, measure and detail areas like the different ceiling heights that yeah, we talked right about there, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is very cool. And you're not gonna move the furniture? Not gonna move the furniture. I might want to have the measurements of the furniture. I might as well capture it. That's a good point. So, I mean, in less than a minute, you're gonna have this entire room scanned. Exactly. It takes about a minute on average to, to, to scan a room. And then once I'm done, I have all of the measurements. Uh, not just the ones that I thought that I would need, but uh, every measurement, including this door frame here. I just touched those two points. Oh, yeah. Look at I wanna capture the measurement of the length of that bed. Yep. It's right there. That's gonna be about six foot six. And so I have all these measurements that I can take with me wherever I go. I can bring it to the furniture store um, or a hardware store and see, uh, and it's like, hey, is this thing gonna be able to fit in my space? Is it decent accuracy? We've been running case studies with professionals out in the field and we're seeing that the majority of measurements are between one and 2%, which is enough for Impressive. them to be able to do their jobs. Yeah. And so uh, w for a professional to then take this and do their jobs with it, they're usually trying to change the space in some way. Um, they're trying to add new stuff in it. They're trying to uh, build new walls. Show the client their options. Yeah, show clients yeah. new options of, hey, this is your space now, and this is what it could be. Right. For that, you're gonna wanna take this mesh and bring it into a computer 3D modeling program yeah. to be able to show those changes. So a CAD program. A CAD program, exactly. Um, and so what we've done is we built a pipeline to be able to convert this 3D scan into a CAD file that a professional can use to start showing those different options. Very cool. And it costs a, a small fee, and there's a, a, a two-day turnaround time, but you press a button and you upload it, and within two days, you get a design-ready file for you to work with. Very cool, and who's gonna be using it? We're working with a lot of professionals already that are using this to completely transform spaces like contractors and architects and designers. Very cool. So Ross, this is Maria Samis. She's the interior designer that's been working with the homeowners on Great. this project. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So I scanned the space and I received CAD files back from Alex and awesome. I've been working on some layouts. Can we see them? Definitely. Oh, cool. So what was really important to the homeowner with this room were the views, a TV, and a really nice big bed. All right. Cool. So if you can see here, this is the original layout of the space. So this is the CAD file that you got from Alex? Correct. Got it, okay. Yes, and these are just the plain walls, as you can see. This okay. is what I received from him, and this is what I've been working on. Got it. So here we are at option A of the room, where we've got a pretty similar layout to what the room is currently laid out with, but we've added a beautiful tufted headboard right here. Mm -hmm. We've added two nightstands, a lounge at the foot of the bed, some extra seating towards the left, and extra media over to the right. Very nice. Yeah. 
And if you want, I can show you option B. Mm -hmm. So here we are at option B. And what we've done is we've taken the bed and we've flipped it 180 degrees up against this front window here. Now we have lost some view, but it really doesn't matter because this is a very busy street and it actually allows the homeowners to gain some privacy in this room. So you can put the TV here and you still have a view. Exactly. You still have the view there. You have a big open floor space in the center and I've actually added two built-ins on either side of the bed there. That's just a great way to use storage. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so as well. So let's go to option C. And here is option C where what we've done is we've actually built a wall right here Okay. And that actually okay. creates a back wall for the headboard of the bed. But what that's really done is it's created two spaces within the space. Okay. So this behind the wall here will be an office area. Okay. And in front of this wall will be the sleeping area. And then the bed would be on the other side of that wall. The bed will be on the other side and of the wall. A cased opening right here. A cased opening there, completely open. So you'd walk in this way, turn left to your bed. Exactly. I yes. like it. I and like it. Yeah. yeah. And we still have the views. And we still have a seating area. And entertainment yeah. right there, TV? Yep, absolutely. Very nice. Yeah. So which one do you think the client's going to go with? So I've shown them all three options, and they've gone with option A. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so from this 3D model, what I've been able to do are some photorealistic renderings. Can I see? Yeah. Cool. cool. So here is the photorealistic rendering of the space. I love the idea for them to be able to see the space before they've swung one hammer. Yes. It's great. It's a little more work on my end in the front, but it really saves us a ton of time and a huge headache at the end. And it's a lot cheaper to be able to change this now before you bring this stuff in. That's right. a great point. Yep. Great point. Well, thank you very much, Maria. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. So, Alex, I get it for the architect. I get it for the interior designer like Maria. Mm -hmm. I get it for the general contractor who's doing remodeling work. Sure for a few hundred dollars to be able to scan a room, get all that data. But what I really want to know is, do you think the regular average homeowner will adopt this technology? I mean, think of the evolution of photography. It used to be a lot more expensive, required specialized equipment, you needed to develop the film, all this stuff. And now everyone has a, a camera in their pockets on their phone, and everyone's a photographer. I think you're seeing the same sort of transition starting to happen with 3D. And it's not crazy to imagine a world in which people are carrying around devices that have this sort of technology to capture 3D models of mm -hmm. spaces and objects as well with them at all times. I mean, imagine uh, you're the flea market and uh, you see a piece that you think would look well in your living room, uh, rather than trying to imagine and wonder what is that thing going to look like, just pull out your phone and drop it in, drop it in and see what it's going to look like, see if it's going to fit, see what, it, see what it feels like in that space. Mm -hmm. And another application is if you're working with a contractor or someone who needs to do an estimate for some other project in your home, well, rather than calling them up on the phone, scheduling an appointment, they come out, they do a bunch of measurements, and then they send you the estimate on how much something's going to cost, well, you can just upload the 3D model to them and they can get started on that project right away. Right, without even showing up. Exactly. I mean, they don't even have to be local necessarily. You could you could work with someone anywhere in the world for these sorts of projects. That's the really interesting thing about working in 3D is that it turns a physical space into data, just like right. a Word document or any other sort of file that you can share with anyone around the world. Right. On the photography analogy, I never thought that I'd be using my cell phone to do a video chat yeah. or take a photograph of a check and deposit it into a bank account. I mean, if this technology really does come into the cell phone, I mean, the ideas are limitless. I mean, it's, it's, you could scan anything. Yeah, and that's what's really excited about being in this space right now. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you so much, Alex, for the, for the tour. Thank Appreciate you. It. Wow, how about that, yeah, huh? Very cool, right? So that interior designer, Maria, did another project, right? So this is the basement, Ooh. right? Completely cluttered. And so she scanned the entire space without moving a single piece of furniture. Looks like everybody's basement. Right. Look at all that clutter, clutter right? right. Exactly. And so what does she end up with? So she ends up with something oh, like this, wow. where she can present these options to the client. Although you talk about it being um, accurate within, say, 1% or 2%. I mean, right. if you're building custom furniture, uh, if you're doing certain projects in the house, it's right. not quite there yet, right? right? So you're right. I mean, it's conceivable, though, that in the future, as mm. the accuracy improves, that this device will be able to scan anything and get so accurate that you could actually you know, scan a room, create some cabinets, get it shipped off to a CNC machine, mm. Have them, you know, have them made, and then you go pick it up and install them right on the site. I mean, that is the way technology goes, right? Yeah. It just gets better and faster every year. It's picking up faster and faster. Mm -hmm.